man must believe to accomplish. What is man but a dream of the gods? <laughs> And welcome to the Friday Fantasy Show from the Bottled Imp, exploring the realms of fantasy. <laughs> My name's Ken Pointer, and today we're going to be taking a look at this little beauty. This is Exodus Volume 2. Now, we did actually review Volume 1. Now, these are a collection of short stories, they are weird and speculative fantasy stories and they are edited by G. Owen Wares. There's various, I think there's nine in this collection, or eight, I can't quite remember. But they are following on, they're made published by the same people, and I believe a few of them are the same authors. But are they as good as the previous volume? Let's find out. <laughs> Extras, volume two. What's it all about? Well, as I said before, it is a collection of short stories and they are weird and speculative. That's the blurb on the cover. And it sums it up very, very nicely because these aren't just traditional kind of westernized medieval fantasy stories. These hark back to, you know, they really remind me of the 1920s, 1930s, sort of strange tales, amazing adventures that kind of feel to it. So the magazines such as Heavy Metal and Weird Tales, you, you would find these sorts of stories in there, but they are modern, they are you know new stories, apart from one which is by the Conan author, and it is, um, sorry, what's his name? I've lost his name, oh no. Anyway, I will come back to that a bit further on in the review. But in volume one, there was they did have a special reprint of a story which was by Robert E. Howard. And as I say, they've done that again, but with the Conan author, which it's just slipped my mind at the moment. Anyway, let's move on to the themes. There are lots of themes and there are lots of variations in the stories. They're not all just one particular type of fantasy. Yes, you do have the sword and sorcery, which is always good to see in a collection. There are fairy tales, there's high adventure fantasy, there's also ancient myths, and there is horror fantasy, and there's one tale, which is a bawdy comedy, which I wasn't expecting to find in there. And at first I thought, oh, is this kind of out of place? But then when I actually read the story, I thought, no, it does fit in nicely because it's nice to have, you know, why can't fantasy actually have a sense of humour? Obviously, you've got Terry Pratchett. This is leaning towards the more carry-on end of, you know, baldy, it's sort of a risque comedy. And it, it, overall, it did work. Initially, it took me a little bit, uh, you know, um, of reading to get into it, to actually digest the concept and what this story is actually meant to be. But it does highlight it because Baldy is in the title, so you kind of know what you're, you're getting at, you know, when you first read it. There are various themes, as you can imagine. There's survival, there's the fallibility of mortality, there's vengeance in one story, there's slavery and obedience, there's the meaning of life or the secrets of meaning of life and looking at the, you know, why are we here, all of the big deep questions. And there's also the theme of loves that have been won and lost. There's also the theme of loneliness as well. So the editor, G. Owen Wares, has done a really good job of selecting stories that not only vary in styles of fantasy, but also in the theme. You don't really get too many themes cropping up and crossing over into from one story to the next. So that's very refreshing because each story is a bit of a surprise. You're not quite sure which direction it's gonna go. Plus there are also illustrations throughout the book and they are they complement each story very very well they are by various different artists so you do get a slight change in the style and there are some that i like more than others obviously you're, you're going to get that with any style of illustration but on the whole they're very very good they do seem to match you know the story that they're portraying so that i do like that in a short story collection if you have a little image first it just you know just sets the scene a little bit for you when you first start to read it the, all the stories are very well written, and that to me is, is a 
you know, big bonus. In volume one, again, I was very impressed with the quality of writing because, you know, you might have a really good idea, a good concept for a story, but then the writing lets it down. It could be clumsy, it could, you know, not flow. All of these flow, all of these... Um, it doesn't feel like you're reading the same author, but there's that certain quality, that certain threshold of, of excellence that... that is runs amongst all of the stories, so that is very good to know. Plus, they are all very intriguing when you look at the picture at the beginning. You think, oh, okay, that looks pretty cool. And you know, it does encourage you to when you first start reading. They they all start very strongly, so you do want to continue reading. At no point was I bored with this. And you know, I've read a few, you know, not not necessarily fantasy, but other short story collections, where there are some that are weaker than others and you kind of maybe think, oh, okay, should I just skip this short story and move on to the next one? I didn't need to worry about that with this. Every single one was a solid story. They're, as I say, they're all varied, which was lovely because it's nice to get a different feel, a different flavour in, in the next story that you're going to read. And as I said before, it does remind me of those weird tales, that heavy metal magazine type stories where they do go off into the surreal, they go off into the strange. Um, they're not afraid to bring other genres in as well and do a bit of cross genreing. Is that a thing? I don't know. Um, so you might have a bit of sci-fi snuck in there. You might have a bit of, as I say, comedy. You know, it was in there in one story. So I did really like all of the stories, which, you know, as I say, doesn't always happen with short story collections. There is also a returning story, and I'm so happy that it did, because it was one of my favourites in Volume 1, and that was Journeyman in Grey, and this is Part 2, and that was by Linus de Beville. And I just really, really loved that character in the first volume, and I, the story did want me wanting more. I actually thought, yeah, wow, this would make a really good novel. So... Yeah, I'm, I'm, so if you have read Volume 1 and you love that story, you'd be pleased to know he's back again. And the story does carry on. It picks off, well, no, it, it kind of picks off where the other one left off. It's the same universe, obviously. It's not, it doesn't seem like too much time has travelled past. So that's a big bonus as well. And there are others, some highlights in there for me as well. I mean, all of the stories were good. I did have a few that I preferred than others, but none of them were weak. So that's, you know, that's obviously a bonus. So I don't quite know how to pronounce it, but it's o Oyin, which I believe is a Norse or Scandinavian word, and that was by G. Owen Wares. And that was a really lovely concept because it was a storyteller story where, and I like the framing device, where there was this, this they, they, they were Vikings of so the Scandinavian, and they're on an island and they see, they describe this boat coming towards them, so they're not sure what it is, is it an invader? And then they realise it's just one solitary person, and they're actually, they offer friendship first, and the friendship is reciprocated, and they share food around the campfire, and then they ask a little bit about him, about this mysterious person, this mysterious figure and he starts to explain why he's journeying around why he's just solitary rowing basically from one island to, a, to the next and it isn't what you think it's not looting he's not after treasure and he's after treasure but of a different sort and I really loved it it was a really good story so nice framing device so it's a story within a story and it was quite poignant, it, it left me quite sad. It was a bittersweet story, um, and it, yeah, so it made me reflect quite a lot. So I like that when stories obviously provoke that, you know, feelings of, you know, of, well, for me it was kind of nostalgia, and, you know, that sort of tragedy of, oh, why didn't you just do that? You know, it's like, if only such and such had happened, if only you'd realised something before, and you basically want to relive that, you want to go back and change it. So that was one of the highlights. There was another highlight one, which, and I really don't know how to pronounce this, so I've got it written down here. It's Varin Ascendant, part one, uh, Lord of the Grey Isles, and that's by Tristan Matthews. And again, that was a really nice concept because it was basically about this void that had this power that a king and all of his previous uh, you know, relatives had been looking after this void, this power. And you're not really told what it is, it's a bit mysterious, but people seem to come towards this island to, to find out what this power is and try to trap it and contain it and use this power for their own 
presumably evil good uh, deeds, or maybe they would use it for good, but they were trying to harness this power and they never succeeded. And there was a twist with this one, there was a few twists in, in some of the stories as well. And this one was a nice twist because I didn't see it coming. And it wasn't over the top, it wasn't unbelievable, it was like, oh, okay, yeah, nice. So it was kind of stealth, a stealth twist, which is always cool. Um, and I really appreciated the, the concept of this, this unknown power, yet we're not going to use it, it just needs protecting and guarding. So I really liked that concept and it was very well written and I, again I enjoyed the twist. And as I say, there was this, um, and uh, I've got it written down. Oh no, it is Robert E. Howard. Oh, so it is Robert E. Howard again, who did the Conan. Anyway, sorry, <laughs> I'm all over the place today. Yes, so it was the Mirrors of Tarzan Thun. Tarzan, I think that's how you pronounce it, Thun. And that was an interesting story. I mean, I've not really met, read much. I, mean, I haven't read Conan. I really should ought to because that is quite a classic sword and sorcery, isn't it? That's probably the one that everybody knows about. So I really ought to explore that. So it was interesting reading another story. It wasn't a Conan story, but it was another story. And it was very uh, reflective. It was, it was all, you know, introverted. Introverted? Yeah, I think that's the word. Introverted, where you look into yourself. And... Uh, it was a king who had kind of struggled, you know, f came from nowhere to, to climb the ranks and then become king. And it was his reflection on his life and, you know, his actions and were they justified. And it was all in this kind of hall of mirrors with a wizard. And it was, it was kind of really sort of surreal, part surreal, part magic, part psychology. It was a really interesting story, and apparently that was written way back in the 1920s. But it didn't feel like that. I don't know what, kind of what I was expecting with, you know, when you look back and read older literature. But it had a modern flavour to it, and I think that's because of this intro, intro. Oh, there's a word. <laughs> um, the, the looking inward, you know, because that's very much a, a kind of psychology, a very modern thing to do, or we think it's modern anyway. So it had that flavour running through it. So that was a really intriguing story and it's nice that they're reprinting some of these older stories you know just to keep them alive overall I thought it was a good solid collection I really did enjoy it each one I say that as I say wasn't there was no weak one in the collection so that's good obviously I did have a few favorites and I really love the journeyman story and, and I'm hoping that it continues there is another story in here that will actually be continuing they have done other volumes and the publisher has been very kindly uh, kind of them to send them to me as well this is volume three so that is the next one that we'll be looking at look at that nice illustration there on the cover as well so there we go yeah so that's extras extras volume two thoroughly thoroughly recommend it <laughs> thank you so much for watching our review of extras volume two Remember, we do have a Facebook page, but also we've recently set up a Facebook group where you can join in the conversation, all things fantasy. Simply search for the Bottled Imp Fellowship, click the join button, and we'll add you in. That's all we have time for. Remember to keep it unreal, especially if you're a rock troll.